It's a disheartening afternoon for sailors at the only remaining marina on Utah's Great Salt Lake. It's crane day. We're pulling boats out of the lake because there's no water to sail. We didn't have a very good winter at all, and so now we're forced to pull our boats from the marina before they get trapped in here. With higher temperatures, less precipitation, and feeder streams being diverted to people, water levels have been slipping for years. It's a bellwether of an overall drought gripping the western United States this summer that is expected to eventually drop lake levels to the lowest in 170 years. We're approaching the one of the historic lows in the surface elevation of Great Salt Lake and that means that everything changes. Changes that have repercussions far beyond the lake's shores. Migrating birds, like pelicans, are losing habitat, and even the billion-dollar ski industry could take a hit. One of the key impacts isn't in the water, but in the air. Researchers say the area's strong winds can kick up the exposed lake bed's dust, which contains dangerous naturally occurring arsenic that people could potentially breathe in. Uh, as the lake continues to decrease, uh, it has exposed more than 750 square miles of lake bed. As it's picked up by winds, the dust lands on surrounding mountains, causing snow to melt more rapidly. Faster melt affects the snowpack that provides for premier skiing, along with diminishing the region's fresh water supplies. If we don't, uh, allow the lake to have its own water rights so that uh, we can preserve the amount of water that's flowing into the lake. The future of the lake is quite bleak. Back at the marina, sailors lament the loss of a treasured pastime. Yeah, it's just sad. This is something that you get out on this lake and it's better than going to a psychiatrist, I say. <laughs> Some people don't think that we're ever going to be able to get back in. A stark reminder that the drought has only just begun. Chris Havlick, Associated Press.